Hello, and welcome to the Resume Help presentation. Uh, my name is Patrick Berry, and I am a public services specialist at your Topeka Public Library, uh, or your Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library, I should say. Um, I'm a member of the library's business team, um, which strives to help our patrons uh, when it comes to their jobs, their careers, and their small businesses. Uh, the topic of today's presentation uh, is going to be centered primarily on resume help. Uh, I'll be sharing tips and suggestions to help you in updating your resume and uh, also to help you develop one from scratch if need be. Um, so let's get started. Resumes. What is a resume? Um, Basically, a resume is a document that summarizes your skills, your education, uh, and your experiences. It shows you're a good fit for that particular job or for that particular company. Uh, the purpose is to convince a potential employer to offer you a job interview. Nothing other than that. Um, and then, hopefully, once you have the interview, they offer you a position with the company. So. Um, what do you do? Where do you get started? Uh, basically, I like to tell people to get uh, jump in feet first right off the bat uh, by doing some research on your own. Um, basically, if you go to YouTube, there are hundreds, if not thousands of videos on how to write a resume, how to construct one. Uh, when you even Google the term resumes, you get tons of uh, results. Uh, our library alone has 60 to 80 books that cover either resumes or resumes and cover letters. Um, so really what you ought to be doing is going out there and see what people are doing and saying. See what is popular now, see some of the terms they use, uh, the phrasing, different templates that are out there, um, and then find what truly works for you. Um, Mentioning the library, one other good resource there is if you go into uh, lynda.com. Um, lynda.com has some resources available as well um, with professionals that go in there and talk about how to design a resume and uh, how to construct one. So there's two major formats when it comes to resumes. Technically, there's kind of a third, uh, which is a hybrid of the two. Uh, but let's take a look at these. The first one is going to be chronological. The next one is functional. Um, with the chronological resume, it's really straightforward and easy to read format. It's the most commonly used one um, where it focuses primarily on your work history, uh, starting with your most recent work and going backwards from there. Um, it's a great format if you're applying for something within your existing industry or field. Um, within the resume, uh, it also lists specific job duties um, and breaks it down in more detail. And each job, it'll show your duties and accomplishments for each position. Um, this is a scratch uh, one or a template uh, that's available out there. Um, it's one um, that basically breaks it down pretty easily for you to understand. You're gonna start at the top with your uh, name and your contact information. Uh, this part, can't stress it enough, is very important. Um, if someone's trying to get in touch with you, they need one phone number, one email, one address. Okay, don't give them a home number and a cell number. Uh, don't give them two different emails, a work email and your private one. Let's keep it simple. Uh, and then within those, let's try to make sure that we keep those professional looking and professional sounding. And when I say that, what I mean is you don't need to have an email that says uh, honeybunny66 at gmail.com. You don't need uh, cowboy kicker at ATT.net. Um, anything like that. Let's try to keep it professional, keep it, 
keep it to your name um, as much as possible. And that just keeps you more in their mind anyway. Um, you can set up a free account through Gmail or uh, other places. Um, and if you don't have one that sounds professional, just go on to Gmail and see if you can set something up there. Um, same with your voicemail. If you have uh, a cell phone or a home service that offers voicemail, please make sure that the message sounds professional. Um, and I really suggest that you try to keep it to a cell phone. They don't expect you to necessarily pick it up and answer it whenever they call, whether it be in the middle of the night or first thing in the morning or during your lunch break. Uh, they understand that you may have another job um, and that you'll get back to them. But what you want is uh, one phone number, preferably one that your family or friends won't answer inadvertently, and one that has professional sounding uh, voicemail. Um, and then you can see how this is laid out with a focus at the very top on work experience, um, your education, skills, and activities. And you can swap those words out um, and those headers out with different words, different orders, and stuff like that. But with the chronological, you tend to end up with your experience being uh, first. Um, at the top, what you may notice is that there's a little area, some people call it a, an objective statement. Some people nowadays call it a summary like you would see on LinkedIn. And it's basically an area where you can type in your career objective, uh, summarizes uh, things that make you stand out, um, using keywords from the job description that's been posted. Uh, things are kind of iffy on this. Uh, I think it's great if you can personalize it to each and every job that you apply for. Uh, if you're not able to do that, I would say there may not be a need to take up valuable resume space with that um, when you can just provide a cover letter and that might actually take care of some of that for you. Um, the, next, the next format would be functional resume. These focus on skills and accomplishments from several different jobs. Uh, then it's followed by a brief list of positions and companies and dates of work history. The main thing in this is that it's geared more towards someone switching industries or changing uh, jobs completely, uh, or that maybe it's a student that's graduating from high school or college that doesn't have a lot of work experience. But it's people that have skills that transfer from one job industry into another. Um, let's take a look here. Uh, this is kind of a rough example. It's not great. Um, I haven't seen any that I really like as far as templates. Uh, I've seen some personally, but um, this template was about the best I could find. You still have your contact information at the top, but notice that the first thing that you come to is the uh, first header is going to be skills. These are your strengths uh, and your qualifications that actually uh, apply to the role or the position that you're applying for. Um, so you may have a job where you worked uh, in, say, let's just say retail. You've got a lot of customer service experience and things like that. Well, that may apply, but it may not be, say you're applying for a job that is more designed towards uh, sales and things like that. So maybe you have uh, customer service abilities, uh, an ability to speak uh, and to persuade people. So these are skills that you might be able to use, but it's not necessarily the job that you've had in the past. Um, so that's something to think about. You're a brand new student, you have a lot of skills that you've developed while at, in high school or college or your part-time work, but it may not be uh, exactly in the same industry that you've either worked at before or that you've thought about. Um, and then let me, I'll just briefly talk about, there's such a thing as a hybrid. And I didn't put this in here, but basically it's a little bit of each one and the, I like those because 
what you're basically doing is you're making the resume fit your skills. Everybody's different. Everybody comes from a different experience background. So what you want to be able to do is build a resume that you're proud of, one that you take pride in and are very willing to sit down and discuss with somebody. Once you can develop something that works for you, it's going to make the interview process a lot easier. You're going to be willing to defend what you put in there. You know exactly what you put in there. You're proud of it. You're proud of the layout. Um, and that will come across when you sit down to actually talk to someone. Um, if you would like some information on that or on hybrids, feel free to reach out to the business team. We would be more than willing to talk to you about some of that stuff. Uh, I don't have one on there because it's basically building one from scratch that that really pertains to you and your job set. So um, feel free, give us a call uh, or shoot us an email. Um, so let's get back into this uh, starting one from scratch here. Uh, what do you do before you start typing? Now for me, I always suggest that you make a list of what you want to include in your resume. Sit down, give us some thought. I mean, this is an important document. This is something that people are going to take as you on a piece of paper, okay? So gather all your information about past jobs, your companies, your dates that you worked there. Think about what kind of skills you have. Um, think about uh, some of the experiences you've maybe drawn from in the past. You've volunteered places. You've done some community service. You work through the church. Uh, maybe you volunteered to help out with your kids uh, swim team or football team. Um, there's little things that might really work into a resume. It just really depends. And once you get all that information compiled and put together, and it may, you may have sheets of paper all over your desk in front of you, and that's fine. Um, but once you do all that work, it's going to make just dropping it in so much easier. Um, but go through and figure that kind of stuff out. And that's where some of this research comes in as well. You can go online and see what other people have put on their resumes and get an idea of what really works for you. And maybe you forgot a certain uh, volunteer job that you did or a certain certification. Well, great. By looking at other people's stuff, that might pop into your mind. So um, try to get as much of the work, uh, the detail work done in advance. Then it's just simply deciding what's going to fit into your resume and dropping it in. All right, so those headers I talked about, you will see them used in all different ways with all different kinds of words used. <clears throat> like I said, at the top, you have a summary, a personal summary, an objective statement. It's called different things. You have professional experience, work experience, work history, uh, professional history, uh, achievements, awards, certifications, licenses. The list goes on and on. It's really going to be what you really feel fits your personality and fits your background. So you'll want to go through and just kind of decide on what kind of uh, <clears throat> headers that you want to use. Um, the basics. Now, just remember that this resume is your first impression. <clears throat> Seven to 30 seconds is all your resume is going to get in the first review. <clears throat> These people, that are gonna be reviewing your resume, um, they're going to be looking at maybe hundreds, if not more. And they're gonna go through one cursory look. It's gonna be real quick. Is it easy to read? Does a person look like they uh, went through and uh, edited everything and proofread it? Uh, is there anything that stands out? So make sure that whatever you do, um, you pass at least this first cursory look. Um, pick a format that fits your needs. Like I said, there's the chron uh, chronological and there's the functional, and then there's the hybrid. And that's one where you can take a little bit from each one and put it together. Um, try to keep your sta to standard fonts, keep the fonts black. Um, font size should be 10 to 14 depending on the style. Some are bigger than others. Some read differently. So you want to go through and just make sure that it looks right. 
try to avoid photographs and graphics uh, unless it's, it applies to the job that you're actually looking at. Um, and then be consistent throughout. Like I said earlier, easy to read, that's your basic. If you've clustered it all up and put all these weird graphs or it has some funky colors to it, it makes it hard for the person to read it and they may just set it aside and not even uh, read through it. Um, there's Make sure there's plenty of white space. You don't want something to go from edge to edge, top to bottom. That's not fun to read. Um, you know, something with some headers, some bold here, um, some bullet points, maybe italicize something here or there, or change the font size for headers. Just try to vary it so that when they sit down to review it, it's something that's easy for them to read. Um, be professional. Don't use slang or profanity, any of that. Um, like I mentioned before, keep the emails professional uh, and um, try to make sure that you show previous experience or skills. Be clear and concise. Bullet point phrases are best. Uh, you want to avoid paragraphs and things like that. That's a little bit more difficult to read. Um, however, paragraphs are pretty much a must when it comes to uh, federal job resumes. Uh, so that may change depending on what kind of job you're looking for. But for, the mo for most people, bullet points and really concise phrasing is going to be best. Uh, try to use keywords that reflect the job description. You're applying for a job in most cases based on a job description or a job posting where they list what they're looking for. If you have some of those um, skills, then put them in the resume so that they see that you fit in. Um, try to keep your resume to one page if possible, two pages maximum, okay? Um, I've known some very experienced people and they can get it to a page and a half. And that's people with a ton of experience. So uh, let's try to keep it uh, shorter and easier to read. Uh, make sure you proofread it. Like I said, go through and look to make sure there's no errors or discrepancies. Uh, I found that reading it out loud the first time works best. We are a society that now communicates in emails and text messaging. So we tend to leave out a word here or there just for ease. So we might forget the word a or the, uh, and our eyes just skip over it. But when you're putting together a resume, you don't wanna miss those words. So spell check may not pick up on some of these things, but if you read it out loud, you'll catch uh, a lot more items. And then I suggest turning it over to friends and family and maybe even your references that you're going to be using to have them uh, go through your resume and take a look at it, proofread it, and see if they catch anything. If these people are truly the people that you trust, they're wanting to help you. And so they'll feel completely free to give you their true opinion. Okay, so make sure you proofread it because the spelling and grammar, they're the first discriminators. When you get that seven to 30 seconds of their time for that first review, if they start seeing a bunch of spelling mistakes and grammar issues, what they're going to do is say, this person doesn't have uh, a grasp of detail. They're not organized. Let's set that aside. I've got 20 other people that do a little bit better job with that. Um, don'ts. Please don't use images or clip art. Um, please don't list personal interests unless it pertains to the job. You're applying for a job at a uh, shoe store company that focuses on running. Okay, maybe your habit of running a marathon every month and being part of a running club, that does apply. It's a personal interest, but it does apply to the job that you're going for. So feel free to put that. But if you're applying for a job as a banker, you don't necessarily want to put down, I love to hunt and fish, okay? It doesn't pertain to the job itself. Uh, please realize that this is a business document, so no false information, no exaggeration. This is something that will sit in your file. So if you lie, if you exaggerate, it will be found out eventually. Uh, don't mention 
your height, weight, marital status, or anything like that, um, please don't say references available upon request. It's rather cliche. If you're applying for a job, they're gonna ask for references. They're gonna understand that you should have references. It's understood. So don't take up you know, two or three lines of your resume uh, with a header that for references and then this simple quote. Use that space for more pertinent information. Um, and don't pay for your resume unless you feel comfortable doing that, okay? There's a lot of templates out there, a lot of free places uh, to get resume uh, and resume help. Um, you can design your own and you can make it look very professional. Um, but some people, they don't feel comfortable doing that. Uh, maybe uh, they're, they're not comfortable with wording or uh, computer work and things like that. That's fine. If you want to pay someone, that's totally acceptable and I understand. Um, there are some resume sites, like I said. Uh, I love Microsoft Word. A lot of people have it. Uh, so I know that when I submit it as a Word document uh, or save the Word document as a PDF, anybody can open it. Uh, there's some other places, uh, Freesume, Google Docs, Loom, uh, Resume.com. There are hundreds of these sites. Uh, the big thing is to make sure that you pick one um, that's straightforward and honest with you. There are some that will try to tell you it's free, and then when you go to print it or save it, they're saying, oh, we need your credit card information. Yeah, it was free to design it on their site and to use their stuff. You just can't get it from them uh, unless you pay. So just be careful and do some research on that. Um, one I like to talk about is ATS. What is ATS? And don't worry if you haven't heard of it. Um, ATS is the applicant tracking systems that are out there. These are used predominantly by large companies. And when I say that, Fortune 500, uh, to help them with their human resources recruitment and hiring. Um, basically, it helps them screen through the thousands of resumes they may get and pass along the ones that are most relevant. Um, I know when I started here at the library, that number was around 95% uh, of Fortune 500 companies use some kind of applicant tracking system. Um, now, I think it's up to 98%. Um, so you start getting these large companies that are nationwide. Um, they post one job and they may have thousands of people apply. So how do they weed through that? Um, so what they do is they can get through a bunch of uh, the resumes uh, by simply running it through a computer system. And then when it gets down to a more manageable size, then turn it over to their uh, human resources people. Um, basically with uh, the ATS, you wanna pay strict attention to the job description for each job you're applying for. Understand the keywords that they use in the job description that they use in uh, the company and the industry. And then you wanna make sure that those words appear within your resume, if applicable. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the computers, what they'll do is they'll scan through resumes looking for key things. Uh, maybe they're looking for someone who can handle uh, Python or some other uh, computer software system. Um, and they're going to be looking through the resumes, looking for that one word. So you want to make sure that uh, some of these uh, words and phrases repeat or appear within your resume. Um, don't use charts, tables, clip art, or page borders. This can kind of confuse some of the software systems that are out there. They're getting better, but it can confuse them. And it can also cause problems when they go to uh, bring it in or import it. Um, they, their software system may not have the same uh, ability to populate the clip art. And so then you'll just end up with blank spots or it'll be all skewed and make it a three page resume instead of one. Um, so not every company has this. It's really des uh, designed for very large companies. However, when you create your resume, 
you're, if you're not sure if you're going to be applying at some of these places, the best thing to do is to try to make sure that uh, your resume works when it's either read or scanned by a computer. Okay. Um, and really it's just good common sense to have uh, words from the job description and from the company within your resume. Uh, so right there, that already puts you ahead. Now, once you've compiled your resume, what do you do with it? Okay. Don't just leave it on your computer. That's great. I, you know, on your computer is great. I've got a resume on mine. Um, a couple years ago when I was actually looking for work, I had it in several places and I found this to be so beneficial. Um, so you, first off, you want to save it as a, as a document or a PDF or JPEG, something that can be uh, opened by pretty much any company that you're applying for. Uh, then once it's saved to your computer, you probably want to think about moving it to a flash drive, USB drive, uh, whatever you want to call it, but some kind of uh, exterior storage so that you can take it with you if you're out and about, or you can at least have it away from your computer. So should your computer crash, you have it somewhere. And then you might also want to think about saving it within Google Docs or send yourself an email with it attached so that no matter where you're at, you can get access to it. So maybe you're traveling and someone says, hey, do you have a copy of your email or of your resume? Could, um, could you send it to me? Sure, let me just dig through my email. I'll pull it up real quick. So always helpful to have it in three or four different places. Other tips, when you're compiling your resume, you wanna make sure that you're confident and enthusiastic. It's going to come through in your resume. If you're unsure, you don't know if this is right, it may come through in your writing. So please sit down and when you're going through all this, please be confident in your skills and your experience, okay? There is a job out there to fit pretty much anybody. And what we want to do is build your confidence and enthusiasm so that it comes through in your resume, your cover letter, your interview, every step of the way. Um, the hard work that you do at the beginning will pay off, okay? So your resume, this is your sales pitch, your elevator pitch, whatever you want to call it. This is what uh, people are going to look at and then pick to interview from. So make sure, you know, the trusted friends, family, and everybody goes through and um, proofreads your resume to make sure there's no mistakes, to give little suggestions or tips. Do your research. Go online. Go to lynda.com and find some places that uh, offer images of them that talk about how to put it together. Um, there's a lot of ideas. Make sure you take them with a grain of salt. But the big key is to find what works for you and makes you happy. Have any questions? Look, feel free to reach out to those of us uh, on the business team. Um, reach out to the business team at the, uh, with any questions or anything like that, or even to set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment. Uh, we have some contact information on our page, um, and please feel free to give, uh, give us a shout, um, and we would be happy to sit down and work with you. I know during these troubled times it can be difficult. Um, what we can do is we can always try to set up a, a Zoom meeting uh, or even a phone call. If you work strange hours, we're happy to try to set up an appointment that works for you. So please uh, understand that we're here to help you with all of this and with all of your questions. So thanks for joining me today. I appreciate you sitting in with me on the resume presentation. Um, and thanks again and good luck.